Gaius Octavius. Later Octavian, or more famously Augustus, great nephew of Gaius Julius Caesar, was born in Rome to a noble family hailing from Velathri on September the 23rd, 63 BC. Augustus was the first Roman emperor and founder of the Julio-Claudian dynasty. This sickly boy would go on to be the longest reigning western emperor of all time, maintaining his position for 41 years. A teenage Octavius overcame illness to journey to Spain so he could accompany Julius Caesar on campaign. Though shipwrecked, he persisted and walked miles through hostile territory to reach camp. Caesar was lacking a legitimate son, so, impressed by his nephew's exploits, he appointed him as his heir. When Caesar was assassinated, Octavian made the journey to Rome to claim his inheritance. There he met Caesar's former right-hand man, Marcus Antonius. The two men, alongside Marcus Lepidus, established an uneasy political alliance in 42 BC, the Second Triumvirate, and proceeded to rule Rome as they saw fit. Antony got the east, Octavius the West, Lepidus, eh, North Africa. They dealt with Caesar's assassins, killed 300 senators and 2,000 aristocrats they didn't like, and ousted Lepidus from the arrangement in 37 BC. The triumvirate fell apart when Anthony, angered, divorced Octavius' sister in favor of Cleopatra of Egypt in 32 BC. Anthony's written will gave his half of Rome to Egypt upon his death, so the Senate declared war on Cleopatra. Egypt was smashed at Actium and conquered in 30 BC. Gaius Octavius was proclaimed Augustus of Rome in 27 BC. He kicked off the Pax Romana and was utterly loved by the Roman people. As princeps, or the first citizen, he performed censuses, built roads, expanded trade, reformed taxes, grew the Roman population, conquered new lands, and founded the Praetorian Guard. Octavian died on August 19th, 14 AD, succeeded by Tiberius. Tiberius Claudius Nero was no Augustus. Rome's second emperor was never intended to rise to the purple. A military man, Tiberius calmly ruled Rome from a distance throughout his early reign, but crushed by the pressure of loss, he lived out his last years in tyranny and depravity on a tiny island. Tiberius was born on November 16th, 42 BC. He lived out his first years on the run from Augustus until his family got amnesty in 39 BC after his father died. He moved in with Augustus and was kept at the bottom of the hereditary pecking order. Miraculously, all of Augustus's preferred heirs died, so Tiberius was recalled from exile. Sworn in on September 17th, 14 AD, Tiberius started off well. He didn't overextend Rome, but built up her navies nonetheless. He balanced the books and left Rome with 20 times the treasury that he had started with. He had a rock star general, Germanicus, but perhaps he was a bit too successful in the eyes of Tiberius, ruling by a thread. Suffice to say, Germanicus mysteriously died in 19 AD. Stressed out by a job he never wanted, Tiberius left Rome for good in 27 AD, moving to the island of Capri. There, he built several complexes where the ever uglier emperor was said to find pleasure through torture and perversion. He ruled primarily through the newly exalted Sejanus, a Praetorian brute that exiled the likes of Drusus and nearly killed Caligula. He became too powerful, so Tiberius had to kill him. The shriveling Tiberius slipped into a coma in early 37 AD. He was presumed dead, and Caligula was elevated to the position of princeps. Then, <laughs> the man woke up. Everyone was freaking out, but then Marco, Sejanus' Praetorian replacement suffocated the poor old man in his sleep on March 16th. Caligula was insane. Gaius Caesar Augustus Germanicus, the son of Germanicus and the adopted grandson of Tiberius, was loved by all for half a year before illness twisted him into one of Rome's greatest monsters. 
Born August 31st, 12 AD, Caligula grew up on campaign with Germanicus. Following his death, Caligula hopped households, eventually ending up on Capri with the man who would slaughter half his family. Tiberius had his mother and two brothers killed. He wasn't exactly a great father figure, simply watching Gaius indulge in all manner of degeneracy. Exalted by the people of Rome, Caligula worked swiftly with his consular allies and Marco to eliminate his co-emperor Gamellus. The first seven months of Caligula's reign were bliss. He cut taxes and hosted lavish, never bloodless, festivals across the empire. Then, the epileptic emperor fell terribly ill in October 37 AD. Caligula recovered, but as a changed man. The newfound sicko killed his father-in-law, Marco, and even Gamellus, perceiving them as rivals. The sex machine frequently stole the wives of patricians to get touchy-feely with them. Moreover, Caligula was not afraid to simply make do with his sisters. Proclaiming himself a god, Jupiter Latiaris, Caligula built himself a temple, where he uh, occasionally sacrificed his own priests. He randomly invaded Germania, winning an intense struggle against the local trees. Caligula also won a gargantuan war against the ocean, seizing all its precious shells and erecting a monument to commemorate his great victory. A lover of luxury, Caligula burned through the 2.7 billion sesterces accumulated by Tiberius in under a year. Cassius Curea, a Praetorian guardsman frequently insulted by Caligula, had enough of the Emperor's antics. He and several other guards stabbed Caligula to death and killed his wife and daughter during the Palatine Games of late January 41 AD. <laughs> Caligula was gone and the last person anybody expected to succeed him was his bumbling uncle, Tiberius Caesar Claudius Augustus Germanicus. But poor old Claudius rose to the purple nonetheless, although he quickly proved that he was no mentally handicapped fool. Claudius was born on August 10th, 10 BC. The poor boy was lame, half-death, drooled uncontrollably, and had a horrible stammer. Considered an embarrassment to the family, Clau Clau was snubbed from public office under Augustus and Tiberius. Claudius accepted his fate, and retired to pursue his oratory and historical passions. Caligula did throw him a bone, but just to torment him. But when Caligula was murdered, a cowering Claudius was taken out from behind a palace curtain, and thrusted straight into the Principate by the Praetorians. Given the circumstances, Claudius tried desperately to make amends with the Senate. No dice. Heck, in 42 AD, many of them revolted against him. While they were hastily put down, Claudius needed some glory. Fast. His answer was Britain, subjugating the south of the island in six months. Despite senatorial hatred, Uncle Clau Clau was loved by the people. He built two massive aqueducts and a brand new harbor. His manners and generosity were rivaled by few. But chief among Claudius's shortcomings was a slew of horrible marriages. His last, following the execution of his previous spouse, to Agrippina the Younger would prove to be his downfall. Claudius, by nature, was easy to manipulate, and the power-hungry Agrippina became his master. She eradicated all rivals, and convinced Claudius to swap out his own son, Britannicus, for her own son, Nero, as his new heir. Now that secession was secured, she saw no further use for Claudius, and moved to eliminate him. On October 13th, 54 AD, she had her dearest Claudius poisoned, and Nero swiftly took over. Uh. <laughs> Nero fixed the political rift sowed by Claudius and adjudicated by the advice of great men and Agrippina. He soon discarded them and ruled more akin to Caligula than Augustus. Lucius Domitius Ahenobarbus was born in Antium on December 15, 37 AD. His father swiftly died and his mother was exiled, 
But he was reunited with Agrippina come the reign of Claudius, whom she killed to get Nero on the throne. Nero, not yet 17, was assured a smooth succession thanks to Agrippina, who now essentially ruled Rome on his behalf, alongside the philosopher Seneca and the Praetorian prefect Burrus. A little golden age was ushered in, and Nero was content to simply pursue his passions, until 59 AD, when he decided to kill his burdensome mother. Burris died soon after, and Seneca decided to bail. Liberated from his advisors, Nero was free to divorce his wife, Octavia, and marry a slave girl, Poppea Sabina, who died three years later. Devastated, but not defeated, Nero found himself a slave boy, Sporus, who resembled Poppea so much that he had him castrated and considered him Sabina reborn. The Great Fire of Rome struck in 64 AD, destroying much of the city. Nero used the convenient opportunity to rebuild Rome to his Greek tastes. Additionally, he sectioned off one third of the land to build a personal palace. Attempting to ease the new economic strain, he hiked taxes, then left to become an Olympic athlete. The revolt of Vindex, and more importantly Galba, the governor of Spain, spelt Nero's downfall. Abandoned by his Praetorians, he killed himself after receiving a melodramatic message claiming the Senate ordered his execution. He bled out on June 9th, 68 AD, airless, and the last of the Julio-Claudians. The circumstances led to Imperator Galba and the year of the four emperors.